All right, so I have set it up. I have my black line art on top. I have my flat color in the middle. That's the only layer unlocked. I have my color references to steal color from, and I have my, my white bread on the bottom. It's important to have that blank white so you can see the colors clearly. You also want to be in RGB mode. If you're in CMYK mode, it might be because you opened your EPS directly in Photoshop instead of dragging it in. And vector files are default CMYK mode. We'll learn more about that when we talk more about coloring. The way you change it is you go to image mode and change it back to RGB. All right, so I've got the head of my manticore. Let me just continue that. That is the focal point, right? So I am setting it up to color. I've got my black line art on top. I've got my blank white underneath. Everything is locked. I've got my color references to steal from. And really, this is kind of exploratory right now. I haven't done preliminary color studies or anything. So I am feeling my way through it. But I'm also doing the labor of flatting. Remember, just taking these shapes that are contained and filling them with colors. Now I'm doing what Dave Stewart does, which is I'm, I'm flatting with just my, my basic paint bucket tool. And I'm using basic saturated colors. I just clicked a little wrong there. I'm using basic saturated colors like this, holding down Option to activate the eyedropper, and then I'm dropping them into my flat color layer. I can do multiples at once, but I want all of these things to be distinct. Right, so I use my magic wand on my black layer, my line art. It's locked. I can hold down Shift, select multiple shapes of white to get rid of, and then I use the paint bucket, go to my color layer, and I can choose different tones to fill them in. And I don't like filling in shapes with black. So when I want something dark, I might use like a dark purple or even a dark gray. When you fill something in with solid black, that's called full bleed. And you might as well do that in your inking if you know something needs to be black. But if I fill it in with total black, then I can't really see what the color potential is of it. So magic wand again. I'm going to do the insides of the eyes. Maybe I want those to be a dark color too, but like kind of a fiery red dark color. So I use my paint bucket, hold down option, steal the color. This is what's called a burnt sienna. And then drop it in on my flat color layer. Now, and if I decide I want that color in the ears instead, I can just drop it in, or even in the mouth, right? There's just so many options. Or if I decide I want this color in the eyes, I can do that. Now, even the teeth, the teeth are empty, right? And I want to get rid of all that blank white. I want all of these things to be filled in. So I'm going to steal all the teeth. So how can I do that? I go to my black line layer. I use the magic wand with contiguous turned on. And I click on the inside of one tooth. Hold down shift. And then I select all the others as well. And the whites of the eyes. Any contained shape. And then... I'm going to pick a color that's a little different than white. I like this one here. It's like just subtle, subtle yellow. So I use my paint bucket. I hold down option. I grab it. I move to my flat color layer and I drop it in. And now we have that color for everything. Now the lip, so it's, this is an entry level job in digital art, flatting. Because it doesn't even matter what color you use, as long as the colors are different than the colors around it. Mm -hmm. 
because it makes the job for the the decision maker colorist a lot easier to have things distinct and flatted already. All right now I have a lot of warms. Maybe I want to play with some bluer colors in the cool spectrum. So I'm going to take all this little spittle coming out of the mouth. I'm going to select that. I'm going to hold down shift. I'm going to get all of it. Go to flat color. Use my paint bucket. Hold down option to steal a color. I'm going to take this light blue. And then the nose. That's the only thing left on the head. The nose and little dot under the nose. Anything that's white, you need to select a color for. So I'm going to use the magic wand from the black line art layer. You'll know you're not on the right, right layer very quickly because the wrong thing will get selected. Then I go to flat color. And then what color for the nose? I'm going to try stealing from another source. The pinks from this artist. And then I'll paint bucket that in. Now, for some of you, when you use option to get the eyedropper, and I don't know why this is, but it won't go to your foreground, it will go to your background, which is really annoying because then you need to swap it before you can use it. So if you notice that you're selecting a color but it's not painting with that color, check if it's going into your background instead. All right, what if you want to cut out a different shape. So for instance, what if I now want to cut this ear out and make it a different shape, even though it's not contained? So this is now what I do. What I'm going to do is use my paintbrush, just like I did for my line art. I want that paintbrush to be 100% hard. I'm going to choose for it to be pressure sensitive and 100% opaque. And I can turn smoothing on if I want. I have it on 51%. And what I'm going to do is on my flat color layer, I'm going to choose the color I want the ear to be. So let's say I want it to be this yellow color. And I'm going to paint with that where I think it should be divided. Like right there and right there. And then I can use my paint bucket and I can fill the ear with a different color. Which then means it's flatted and I could use that that shape to make a new color. Same thing here. So you're kind of creating your own division. So how does that look different? So you'll notice the ones that have the contained shapes are all separated by white because they're all individual. The ones that don't have the contained shapes, it's a little bit sloppier. They're just separated by my painted line. but they can be as easily changed as anything else with the paint bucket tool. So if I want this color, I can drop that in for the ears and for other parts as well. Right? And then with the line art on top, it will look nice and clean. So that's the beauty of flatting. So I'll continue that. What if I want this fur here to be a different color? I can just cut it with a shape or cut the shape with a line and then I can contain that, right? So now this can be a different color than anything else. Or even something like this. I can create my own shape within. Now this is all just still flat color, so that doesn't quite make sense, right? But those are the kind of effects I can add later. That would be called duotone coloring. And this is why it's helpful to have inspiration images, because they can kind of sh show you this type of coloring technique, how they, how they use shadows, how they use highlights, what kind of flat colors they choose. 
But right now, all of this is just on one layer. These are my flats. You just want to be careful when you divide it up. You see how I missed that little part? So I'm going to use my paintbrush, steal this color, and paint it back all underneath the line art, just like a coloring book. And the colors you choose should just add to your illustration. All right, so I've got the head. Good time to save it. Okay, so I've got the head of my manticore. Now, I continue this process and I find the colors for the body. And this is just flatting, just adding more and more info that I can then color with. So I'm going to select all of those. They're all nicely contained. Even the little ones in between, like here. And then I pick a color. Now, if you feel limited by the color options you have that you can steal from, I want you to be inspired. Dave Stewart, my favorite digital color, starts with extremely limited colors. right? And is able to get some of those beautiful digital coloring starting there. But I can often feel limited by these options. But once they're filled in, they're so easy to change. So, so easy to change. But the hardest thing about digital coloring is choosing the right flat colors. Now the other thing you can do is if you feel like the color is close but not quite there, you can always select it you know, using option and then you can use the color selector here and just modify it a little bit, push it a little bit brighter, a little less saturated, and then drop that in. Or a little bit darker, less saturated, like I did. Let's do a lighter version. So these are variations on the color. Right. But you do want them to be distinct from each other, so they're easy to select. Then for all the claws, this takes a lot of time. Do the toenails. The back legs. And then I'm doing all of this and then I'm realizing there's something I didn't ink. So this is the beauty of using a vector as well. So let me just 